I am indeed nervous about this comment section. Hi everybody, Nikki Marr here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I put out new Disney content every single week, so make sure to hit the subscribe button to never miss magic from me. Now as you probably saw by the title of this video, we are ranking every single Disney Pixar movie in existence. Now in the past I've ranked every single Disney animated movie and also the Disney princesses. And while I feel like my opinions line up more with the general public on those topics, the Pixar movies are another story. If you are excited for today's video or if your favorite Pixar movie ends up in a good place, make sure to hit the like button. And without further ado, let's get started. And as always, there are some disclaimers and conditions, but if you want to jump right to the ranking, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost, I am not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company, and therefore I do not speak for the brand or the company. And also, this video is all just my opinions, for better or for worse. <laughs> if your favorite Pixar movie ends up low on my list, that is totally okay. These are all just my opinions, and what makes the world a beautiful place is that we all gravitate towards something different. And if your favorite movie does rank kinda low, leave me a comment down below and tell me why your favorite movie is your favorite. I absolutely love connecting with people over Disney movies, so make sure to leave me a comment down down below. Now let's get into some conditions for today's list. First and foremost, these movies must be either a theatrical or Disney Plus release of a Disney Pixar film. And the other condition for the list is that it doesn't come from the Disney Toon Studio. So my apologies to all of the Planes fans out there, but Planes will not be making the list today. And if my calculations are correct with all of these conditions, that leaves us with 27 movies to rank. We got some work to do. Let's get started. We are starting off today with the F tier. These are movies that I do not particularly enjoy. I find a lot of faults either in the plot or with characters or with world building. And while the Pixar team might have created really great concepts, they just leave a lot to be desired. Coming in all the way at the bottom today at number 27, is Cars 2. Now, Cars 2 to me was disappointing to say the least. As somebody who really, really loved the original, loved the story arc about Lightning McQueen and that old timey feel of driving on Route 66, it was a huge departure to go the whole Tomator becomes a secret agent spy and saves the world plotline. I don't know, to me the comedy wasn't as good, the storyline wasn't as strong, and it just sort of came out of left field for what the original movie was. It was just, it was just weird, and I didn't really love it. Also, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like significantly less attention was spent on racing in this movie. I don't know. This is one I just don't typically enjoy, so it's gonna rank at the bottom for me today. Moving on to number 26 is The Good Dinosaur. Now, The Good Dinosaur is just the tiniest little step up from Cars 2. I really do not enjoy this movie. To me, the characters are not memorable. The plotline reminds me vaguely of The Lion King with the whole passing of a father. And when it reminds me of The Lion King, it kind of makes me wish I was watching The Lion King, which isn't even my favorite movie, so goes to show. <laughs> but the biggest reason why I don't like this movie is actually the scene with the berries. Now, if you know, you know, and if you don't know, ignorance is bliss. Just trust me on this one. There's an entire scene where the two leading characters eat these berries and have an absolutely horrific, like, psychedelic episode. And it is horrifying, to say the least. While Arlo is a really cute character, and I think his design is really, really sweet, and he seems endearing, it's just not for me. This movie is not one that I revisit to enjoy. Moving on up to number 25 is Cars 3. I feel so bad. These Cars sequels, they're not doing too hot. Cars 3 is, of course, the sequel to Cars 1 and 2. And while this one does return a little bit more to the scrappy racing energy that the first movie had, it does not measure up at all. To the first movie. We've gotten rid of a lot of the secret spy thing with Tomator that felt really strange, but overall this one still seems really forced and not organic at all, again, when you compare the first film to it. I don't have as many bad things to say about this movie, it's definitely just not one that I enjoy. Moving on to number 24. I am so worried about the comment section. At number 24 is Monsters University. Now I'm just gonna be completely honest and upfront, Monsters Inc. is not my favorite universe in general. I've just never typically gravitated towards the monsters, and while I think 
their designs are cute. I think Sully's absolutely adorable as a big, fluffy, lovable character. And Mike Wazowski, of course, has a really drastically different design from him that's equally as fun. The Monsters Universe in general just hasn't really spoken to me. Now, Monsters Universe being a predecessor to Monsters, Inc., telling about the school days of Mike and Sully as they learn to scare, does add some interesting elements to Monsters, Inc. It's sort of strange but interesting that they need a schooling in order to do the job of scaring, but Overall, to me, it just ends up feeling a little bit unnecessary. Although I will say Baby Mike Wazowski is absolutely adorable. Moving on to the C tier, these are movies that I enjoy quite a bit. However, I do still find fault in them at some point in the movie. Overall, they're not bad. I would definitely encourage people to watch them. Just know that they aren't quite near my favorites. Moving on to number 23. Bug's Life. Now, Bug's Life is an interesting movie. The Bug's Life was the second movie that Disney and Pixar collaborated on, and it is evident in the animation style, which is rough. There are certain scenes where you just are watching and there's that old CGI feel to it. Pixar still at that point hadn't found its concrete footing. It was getting there, definitely a step up from the first film, but it's still not completely there. Now the difference with this movie is I think the characters are a lot more interesting. Flick, Ada, and Dot are absolutely adorable, and Hopper makes for a great villain. It's just not an overall universe and vibe that I typically gravitate towards, but I absolutely understand how a lot of people do enjoy this one. Moving on to number 22, again I'm so sorry, Monsters, Inc. <laughs> Again, Monsters, Inc. is just something I don't typically gravitate towards. My favorite thing about Monsters, Inc. is the ride that is in California Adventure, Mike and Sully to the rescue. I really enjoyed that dark ride. But the movie overall is just, it's just not my favorite. I don't, I really don't know why. I can't pinpoint an answer. I think it has a great plot and I really like the character design. Just overall not for me. But I'm so happy that it has a strong fan base out there. That does make me very, very happy. And with that, we're moving on to number 21, Incredibles 2. I really liked the plot of this film. The one thing that I think sets it back significantly is the twist villain. Disney and Pixar were both in this huge era of twist villains at the time. Think Hans and Bellwether and Ernesto de la Cruz, and Evelyn Dever fits right in with the rest of them. Except this villain wasn't really one that you could hide. I mean, it's right in her name. Evelyn Dever? Evil Endeavor? Evil Endeavor? Anyone? While I love the general idea of Bob being the stay-at-home dad and Helen having to be the breadwinner now, I think that creates such an interesting dynamic. I also love that we're giving Jack-Jack powers. It really lets him be a part of the family as opposed to the little baby that just has to stay home. Especially because he's such a cute character. But yeah, I really don't have a lot to say that's bad about this movie. There are a lot more movies that are more iconic and the twist villain didn't work for me. Moving on to number 20, I am gonna ruffle more feathers and I know that and I'm sorry, is Toy Story 1. Now I like the plot of Toy Story 1. To me, that's my absolute favorite thing. It perfectly sets up this entire saga of the Toy Story series. And I don't think anything in the plot could have changed or have been different. The one place I do dock this movie where it's not necessarily anyone's fault is the roughness of the animation. This was the first Disney Pixar movie, and so I can absolutely give it grace for looking as rough as it does. However, I will say there are certain scenes where I'm watching and it takes me completely out of the story. Computer animation was new and it was upcoming and this movie looks significantly better than a lot of the shorts from the Disney Pixar studios that came before it. But again, still a little rough. When you compare the first of Pixar and the first of Disney, Snow White's quality was really, really up there. And to me, the quality of animation in Toy Story 1 is the only thing that hinders it. But again, I don't blame the studio and I don't blame Disney. They had to start somewhere. Moving on to number 19 is Lightyear. Now, this one felt like a stretch to me. Creating a movie based around a human version of a toy character, that went a little bit far. <laughs> now don't get me wrong, I really did enjoy the characters in this movie. I think the twist in the end with Zerg was interesting, strange, but interesting. It was definitely not one that I picked up on, I'll be completely honest. But in watching this movie, I was really just thinking to myself, what does this add to the Toy Story universe? Again, don't hate it, it's just not my cup of tea. I am really scared for this one. I know that there is a big community of people out there that love this movie, and so I apologize to all of you in advance. At number 18 is Inside Out. Now, I will be completely honest, the characters, the plot, everything in this movie is a huge step up 
from Lightyear. However, again, this was just not one that I personally gravitated towards. I love the colors in this movie, I have to say, and one of my favorite parts of this movie was the little callback shout out to the Haunted Mansion. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. I think a lot of the comedic moments of having Riley's brain feel like its own world, I think a lot of those moments were just fantastic. And of course, Bing Bong and his whole storyline is very, very touching. But again, there are just a lot of movies on this list, and I like a lot more of them significantly more than Inside Out. Again, if you love this movie, absolutely wonderful. I'm so excited for its sequel, and I'm hoping that this one catches my attention a little bit more. But if you love Inside Out, make sure to tell me why down below. At number 17 is Toy Story 4. Now, I think Toy Story 4 has significantly better animation than the first one in this universe. And while I loved the whole vibe of the antique store, and I I have to say I love the marionette dolls. I think they're just an absolutely incredible addition to be a members of the villains group. I liked Gabby Gabby. I love the whole energy of the fair and Bo Peep's story really touched me too. Spoiler alert, the only thing that makes me put this movie so low on this list was that Woody left the group at the end. To me, that just didn't seem like something Woody would do. If anything, I think he could have shown Bo how much the original group loved and cared for her and convinced her to come back into a community of people that really cared about her. I think splitting off from the people that he cares about the most is really uncharacteristic. But again, we have a Toy Story 5 coming, so who's to say that the band of misfits won't reconnect once again? Moving on to the B tier, these are movies that I really enjoy. I have no problem sitting down and re watching any of these, and the only thing wrong with them is that they come from a company that makes incredible movies that can't make them reach the A or S tier list. <laughs> At number 16, not straying from the path too far, is Toy Story 2. I love Toy Story 2. I think the addition of Jessie is what makes this movie so incredibly strong. She instantly feels like a classic character that fits in perfectly with every other character in Toy Story. I love the idea of these toys traveling through the toy store, Al's barn, and I think the whole adventure of just trying to bring Woody home and him eventually convincing Jessie to give being with a kid another chance is really, really special and sweet. I also love the segment when Woody is getting repaired. I think that one is one of the standout scenes for me in this movie. Moving on to number 15 is Onward. Now, while I tend to gravitate towards fairy tale settings a lot more than any other setting, this movie sort of brings fairy tale into the modern world, which I found a little strange. I love Ian and Barley so much. I think they're really cute and magnetic characters. The plot was good for the most part. It's not the strong strongest amongst the Pixar studio, and in general, this movie just didn't pull at my heartstrings as much as a lot of other Pixar movies tend to do. Overall, I would just say that Onward is very, very middle of the road for me. It has its great moments, and other moments don't really catch my attention as much. Moving on to number 14 is Finding Dory. Now, I really enjoy this movie. It's very cute. I think the character expansion that they did on Dory adds a lot to the Nemo franchise, and I think telling the whole story about her with her parents when she was a child is just very, very sweet and touching. I think the new characters that they added, including Hank and Bailey, were really innovative and added a lot to the story. And a moment of comedy that I really enjoyed was Dory talking to Sigourney Weaver over the loudspeaker as if she was like a divine being. I thought that was really funny. But yeah, I really enjoy the big climactic moment at the end of this movie, and I think it has a perfect resolution. Not really a lot bad to say about this movie. At number 13 is WALL-E. Again, a movie that I really enjoy. However, there are a lot of other movies that just beat this one out for me. What I think WALL-E does so incredibly well in comparison to a lot of other movies on this list, however, is commentary on the human race, with Wally -E being this lone robot having to start cleaning up the Earth so that way the humans who are up on this spaceship can just enjoy life, really makes you feel for this character. And as soon as he has an interaction with one other robot, it just creates such an incredible energy between the two that you can't help but absolutely fall in love with these two robots. I think the whole scene of Wally -E and Eve dancing out in space is really sweet and special, and the end actually gives a good amount of hope with 
plant returning to Earth and, and the hope that it could repopulate the Earth with trees and wildlife. And of course, we can't forget that Wally's namesake was Walter Elias Disney himself. Oh, and the fact that the villain is the spaceship, like technology takes over, I think that is such an awesome plot line. Again, one that makes you really think man versus technology. Quite interesting. We are moving on to the A tier. The A tier is full of movies that are just absolutely incredible, and the only thing wrong with them is that they're not the S tier movies. <laughs> moving on to number 12 is my favorite of the Toy Story series, Toy Story 3. Now, I love this movie quite a bit. I think this installation of the Toy Story series is the strongest by far. I think the setting of the Sunnyside daycare is really innovative and something that the general public wouldn't necessarily think about in terms of the first place that toys could end up, where they would be in danger. I think Lotso makes for a great villain. Again, a twist villain technically, but one that I think was done very, very well. I think the scenes with Barbie and Ken are super fun, and they add a lightheartedness to this overall pretty dark movie. I mean, when you think about it, the toys pretty much end up in toy jail and the ending is very, very scary. With the whole incinerator scene, oh my god, that just tugs at the heartstrings 100%. In my opinion, Toy Story 3 just feels like a bow wrapped on top of the Toy Story series, and I really think it could have ended there. But regardless, we're still going with it, and we will be seeing more of Woody and his friends in the future in Toy Story 5. Moving on to number 11, The Incredibles. Now, The Incredibles was a movie that I absolutely wore out as a child. This movie was on all the time. I think the characters are so well developed and so interesting, each having their own power that sort of correlates with their personality. When you think of Violet, the shy teenager, and she just wants to disappear into the crowd, she's invisible. Dash, who's the younger brother who has so much energy in life, is super speedy. I think the villain is so great in this movie, and I just love the whole plot line. I think this movie is just an instant classic, and I think everybody should see it at some point in their life. I have nothing bad to say. There are just more movies that I like a little bit more now. Moving on to number 10 is Turning Red. Now, I love this movie so much. I think May is such an incredible character. There's so much depth and development with her and she's quirky and she's interesting and she's fun and she's unlike any other character in the Pixar universe. Truly a unique individual. I think the moments of her turning into the red panda are really great commentary. I absolutely love the boy band. I think they're a really awesome addition to this movie. And I think her relationship with her mother is also really endearing. Overall, I just think this was a really great addition to the Pixar canon. At number nine is Up. I think Up is a very similar situation to The Lion King, in my opinion, which is the beginning of the movie is absolutely the strongest part of it. With The Lion King, the circle of life is like the best three minutes of this movie. And with Up, I think the story of Carl and Ellie is really heart-wrenching and just gets you so emotionally invested. However, that plot line quickly turns away from his relationship and sort of turns into this buddy adventure with Russell and Doug. And while the reason that Carl is bringing his house to Paradise Falls is because of Ellie, I feel like a lot of the attention gets drawn away from the relationship. If they had readily kept the relationship in our minds throughout this movie, I think it would have succeeded significantly more. Again, I absolutely love this. I love the characters. I think Kevin is absolutely wonderful, who you can also meet in the Animal Kingdom if you see her walking around. And yeah, I just love the up house and all the balloons, of course, and I think the forest surrounding Paradise Falls is a really special setting for this movie. Moving on to number eight. Here we go. Finding Nemo. Now, I love Finding Nemo. This movie is also an instant classic. I think the story of Nemo being taken into the dentist's office and the scared Marlin having to travel across the entire ocean to find his son, finding the bravery along the way, is just so magnetic and eye-catching, and it gets you emotionally invested right off the bat. I also find it particularly interesting that this movie is often used with therapy for parents. Marlin is a very overbearing parent, and he often often feels like Nemo needs his guidance every single place in his life. But I think this movie does a really good job of teaching people to lessen their attachment and just to let things happen, to not worry about every single moment of every single day. And also the band of characters in this movie are just fantastic. All of the characters in the tank are so fun and funny to watch. Crush and Squirt, of course, are absolutely incredible. And Dory is, of course, a fan favorite. Deservedly so. Moving on to number seven on my list is Cars. Now, 
Now, Original Cars is just wonderful. I love the story of Lightning McQueen, this equivalent of a celebrity in the Cars world, finding himself in this dirty, dingy little town and absolutely falling in love with it and feeling like he can leave his lavish life behind because he found his true happiness. I think the two settings of Radiator Springs versus the Piston Cup racetracks create a really awesome duality, and I think it's nice that he gets to keep both parts of his life at the end of the movie while also finding a more rounded out and deeper version of himself in the process of the journey. Again, the characters are wonderful. Toe Mater and Sally and Doc Hudson, of course, are just wonderful leads that just seem so necessary in driving the plot forward. And I have to shout out that I absolutely love Cars Land over in Disney California Adventure. That land just feels like you are walking through the movie. Nothing but good things to say about the original Cars. And it is time. We have finally arrived at the S tier. These movies are the top of the top. They are wonderful. I could rewatch them all day, every day. And I think these movies make Pixar a force to be reckoned with. We are moving on up to number six in my list which is Soul. Now, this movie gets my brain going. Unlike any other movie on this list so far, I feel a genuine sense of gratitude for my life when this movie ends. It is extremely deep and gets you thinking about human life and souls and the enjoyments that we find in our everyday life, much like music. The character of Joe Gardner is just wonderful and does a great job right off the bat of getting our emotional investment. The addition of the score of jazz music is just wonderful and perfect. And the movie does a really great job of rounding out all of the scenery of the movie. It really feels like a real world that we're experiencing with Joe. Again, Soul is more so an intellectual experience rather than just a generic campy feel-good movie to me. It really gets the gears turning up here and it makes me so happy that I get to really like reflect upon my own life after experiencing all of the spiritual realm that Joe gets to experience. Well, it's just such a feel-good movie. We have reached the time for my top five. Are you nervous? I am, but I'm ready. At number five is Elemental. Now this one became an absolute new favorite of mine upon seeing it. Originally when I saw the ads for this movie and saw that it was coming to theaters, I wasn't super interested. I was like, elements. What are they gonna do with that? But wow, they created a perfect storyline to provide commentary on real life relationships. Ember and Wade are told from the beginning that they can't be together because they're two separate elements. Water and fire quite literally don't mix. But the relationship is so deep and rounded out that you can't help but root for them to end up together in the end. I also think Ember's relationship with her father is extremely special and unlike any other relationship we've seen in a Pixar movie. I also think the world building needs a massive shout out here because the city that the Pixar team created for this story to take place in is absolutely gorgeous. If you haven't seen this movie yet, do yourself a favor. This one is not one you want to miss. And I can only hope that Disney incorporates Elemental into their parks a little bit more. I would love to see this movie represented. And it's my personal hope that we get to see more of Ember and Wade in the future. We know Pixar loves their sequels. I'd be down for an Elemental sequel. <laughs> but with that, we're moving on to number four, Brave. Now you all know how much I gravitate towards a fairy tale setting with a princess character. And yes, Brave is number four on this list because we'll get to the other three incredible movies in a second. I absolutely love Brave. I think this story does such a wonderful job of making commentary on the relationship between Merida and her mother. Merida is impulsive and young, wild and free, and she makes decisions with so little thought. And her mother is very strict and everything has a time and a place and perfection should be strived for in every situation. And it's so interesting to see these two put in the same room and have to interact with each other as family. The music is really wonderful in this movie. I think Ancient Scotland is a far out yet perfect addition to all of the settings that Pixar has created. And shout out to the team who had the task of animating Merida's hair. Whoa. I remember reading somewhere that Merida has like two or three times the amount of hair follicles that normal humans have. That is a massive undertaking and wow, did the Pixar team do a good job. I just love this movie and I think Pixar's take on a true fairy tale setting 
was really something special, and I would love to see more of this in the future. A movie from Pixar without technology, without all of this modern day commodities that we see every day. I think just a simple fairy tale setting with a story about a mother and her daughter is just so wonderfully done. And I'm so happy that this movie gets so much attention because Merida was named an official Disney princess. It will make not only this movie, but also this princess go down in history. Moving on to my top three, at number three is Luca. If you are wondering as to why this movie ranks so high up for me, well, it has quite a bit in common with another movie that ranked very, very high for me on another ranking that I did. You should totally go check out my Disney animated movies list after you watch this video. But yes, Luca has quite a bit in common with The Little Mermaid, which is of course my favorite Disney animated film. The story of Luca being a sea creature and wanting to go to the human land to experience all that they experience is just an absolutely wonderful plot. And while it does share quite a bit in common with Little Mermaid, it does a lot to change it up and make it seem like a brand new story. Luca is given two friends to accompany him on his journey, including Alberto, who is very, very crazy. <laughs> this character does a lot of zany things that I think really balance out Luca's cautious personality. And of course, Julia, who is just a fierce, fierce friend who really cares about Luca and Alberto and their well-being while they're visiting the land. I think the plot of winning the race is very special, while the added element of Luca's parents coming on land to look for him, adding a level of complexity and stakes to this movie. Overall, this one, I just really, really love it. And again, the ending leaves us with sort of a cliffhanger as to we don't know how Luke is gonna do in school. Will he come back and see Alberto and Julio one day? I don't know. I hope we get to find out one day. <laughs> but yeah, I just love Luca so much. Oh, so good. Moving on to number two, I can very confidently place this movie and I'm not worried to say it at all. Coco. Coco is wonderful. I love this movie so much, I could watch it over and over and over again and absolutely never get sick of it. Now, Coco tells the story of Miguel, a music lover who, of course, comes from a family of shoe cobblers. He's expected to go in the family business, however, he wants to follow his heart and one day be a musician. He thinks that his ancestor is the great Ernesto de la Cruz, beloved musician of the time, and he finds himself in the spirit realm, which is extremely well done. The color in this movie is unmatched, even to number one on this list. The color in this movie is just fantastic. I think the characters are all very well-rounded, demand audience's attention, the music is wonderful, and Miguel, again, is just a sweet soul who you can't help but root for. I love that this movie was added into Mickey's Philhar Magic as a segment in the Magic Kingdom. And in all honesty, I know this movie gets a lot of love, but it deserves even more. I got so excited when I heard a Coco Land was in talks for the Magic Kingdom. I am still crossing my fingers. I hope every single day that we get a permanent location for Miguel and his familia. And at number one, have you guessed what it is yet? If you have an idea to which one you think it is, leave it down below. I'll give you one second. Okay, I'm ready. At number one on my list of Disney Pixar animated movies is Ratatouille. Oh my God, I love this movie. I love this movie. I, I love this movie. Whoever at Pixar thought of the plot of a rat wanting to be a culinary chef and doing so by hiding under the hat of a human and pulling on his hair in order to puppeteer him into creating incredible meals deserves the biggest raise in the world. This movie is just pure enjoyment and there is depth behind it and there are incredible characters like Linguini and Chef Skinner and Colette on top of Remy, of course, who is an absolutely lovable soul. I think the music in this movie really helped to establish environment. Remy feeling the need to hide his attachment to the human world is quite interesting. And when he's finally separated from his family, he's able to expand upon that and enjoy that and live it in the moment. I just love that in this movie, each character has their own well-rounded plot that just absolutely cross over perfectly. Linguini can't cook, and yet by meeting this rat with extraordinary talents, he becomes basically a celebrity. Colette, who's given a task of training a garbage boy to become a culinary chef, 
later falls in love with him, and with him opens their own restaurant. In my opinion, everything about this movie is just absolute perfection, and I think it's the perfect little cherry on top of our list today. And not even mentioning Remy's Ratatouille adventure over in Epcot in Disney World, this ride is phenomenal and places you right in the middle of the action that Remy experiences. I absolutely love this movie, I can't say enough good things about it, and that is the reason why it ranks at number one on our list today. And with that, we have reached the end of my list of favorite Disney Pixar movies. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun talking about all of these movies. If you love Disney as much as I do, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and like this video, because at this point I'm coming out every week with new content and I want to make sure you guys never miss the magic. As always, you can also find me on my other social medias. I am on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all have a magical rest of your day, and until next time, see you real soon.